Hello, Gemini. This is a general reading for the sign of Gemini. My beautiful friends, welcome to this reading. Welcome to the space. It's always wonderful to have you. Before I get started, I want to let you know that there's a storm going on outside. So there's wind and rain um, and tree branches hitting my windows and my walls. So if you hear noises in the microphone, it is the storm that is happening outside. Um, my friends, this is a general reading for the sign of Gemini. It will resonate, it could resonate with anyone who has Gemini strongly in their chart. But as we know, we have complicated natal charts and this reading will not resonate, will not fit for everyone. Um, but even if it doesn't fit for you and you're listening, I hope that it has um, some information or some kind of um, bit of story that can help you as you move forward in your travels. All right, Gemini, let's go ahead and get started. If you prefer not to listen or not to watch the shuffling, just move forward in the reading to where I actually begin um, to, to do the reading part of it, okay? What is the current energy, please, for this group of Gemini people? What is the current energy for this group of Geminis? What is the current energy for this group of Gemini people? What is the current energy for this group of Gemini people, please? What is the current energy? What is the current energy? What is the current energy for this group of Gemini people? There you are. What is the current energy for this group of Geminis? What is the current energy, please? Move it in so you can see it. This is the current energy. Then we have this this kind of a thing going on. All right. So those cards are placed like that intentionally. That's how they came out. We have the three of wands, the nine of wands, the lover's energy, the five of swords in the lateral, and the king of cups, and the king of swords in the lateral. All right. Let's look at what Gemini is stepping into in the next immediate in. Next immediate income. <laughs> the next immediate incoming energy. What is Gemini stepping into, please? In the next seven to ten days, the next two weeks, the next three weeks, um, the next immediate period of time, right? However that is for you. What is Gemini stepping into, please? What is Gemini stepping into, please? What is Gemini stepping into, please? What is Ge Gemini stepping into, please? What is Gemini stepping into? fingers are still buzzing, so I think there's still one more energy in here. Maybe not. Maybe not. One more time, and if nothing comes out, then we're good to go. All right. All right. Guidance for Gemini. Guidance for Gemini, please. Guidance. Guidance for Gemini. It's a more simple energy. Um, I don't, okay. I don't mean simple. I mean clean. I know we have some movement here, but the energy is clean. In fact, um, sometimes the cards come out of the deck and they flip over. So I can't see what they are as I'm shuffling. This time the cards all came in so I could see what they were except for two. Um, we have two energies. We have this energy that I can't see what it is and this energy and guidance that I can't see what, what it is. But the rest of these energies, I can see what they are. 
right? They all came in. So I think from what I'm, what I'm feeling here, I, um, I, I just think that there is really, um, some type of clarity that you have received and the energy seem to be cleaner. Um, they're easier to access. There's less fog, um, that is in between you and the information you need to move forward. Okay. So the underlying, there is an underlying story here. The underlying story, or if you want to call it the overlying story, whatever, you, however you want to call it, is that you are, you are, you are coming out of a period of time where you've been in conflict. Five of Swords, right? So you're, you're coming out of a period of time when you've been in conflict and you are kind of still sitting above that energy, right? So it's affecting possibly, it, it could be affecting or trying to affect how you're going through your day, right? It's not really happening anymore. You, you've you made decisions here with the King of Swords. You've made decisions and you have cut people out or you have cut situations out or you have found clarity on what this conflict is. And I think that you have really kind of mostly resolved what this is. It's not really any of this. This is a different kind of an energy. It's totally different. The cars came out differently. Um, they count, they came out differently. They came out at the end. And I feel like they are part of this story, but it's a, it's a chapter that's ending or it's a chapter that is ended, but it still could be sort of influ, oh, nine of wands. It still could be kind of influencing your progress now. But what's happening now is the three of wands with the nine of wands and the lover's energy. So you have something here that's happening to you that is coming towards you. So something is coming towards you. You feel very optimistic about it. You feel very excited about it. It's passionate energy. So um, you could be preparing to take action. It's almost like a deadline is coming towards you or you're stepping towards some kind of a deadline or something here that's looming ahead of you. And I don't mean glooming ahead of you but looming ahead of you. It could even feel big for you what's coming in. All right. So it's something here that you're accessing here. Here's the, here's the star and the moon. Like something is, it's, it's all in the beginning process of the three of wands, but it's something that you have started to see come into fruition. Remember with the three of pentacles, it's something that you're actually working on that you have your hands on. The three of wands, it's this something that you have already started to take action with, right? So you've already started to take some action because this card came out um, and I have it in the upright. So maybe you haven't gone very far, but you've already started to take action and you're beginning to feel like this could really come. This is going to really come to you. You're really going to step into this. It is part of your future and you're feeling very optimistic and excited about it. It's a kind of a dreamy feeling with this energy, is it not? And you're not by yourself here. You have a friend. So it's like the, and you also have these wands that are here. So you have, um, some, you have something here that is, that is helping you stay grounded. Look how you're grounded. So even though you have wishes and, and wishes that are feeling like they're coming true and big things that are looming out in the, out in the future, um, you have friends, you have the earth, which you can ground onto what kind of a beautiful foundation the earth is, right? The earth is the most beautiful, strong foundation. Sometimes it has earthquakes and sometimes there are disasters, but the earth really um, is a beautiful foundation that we can build homes on. We can build lives on, we can build businesses on, right? It's, it's, it's a beautiful grounding place and we see you on the earth. So I feel like you're, you're, you're working on being grounded as this new energy comes in and you have your friend here and that helps you. All right. We have the nine of wands energy. So the nine of wands energy, especially in this deck, this is the wheel of the year tarot. I love this, this deck. I, I just um, got it in about a month ago and I love it. I love using it. I'm having a huge bat on it right now. Um, it just fits right now with my energy and it fits with your energy too. I can feel it. It's fitting. So we have the nine of wands energy and in this nine of wands energy, um, usually with the nine of wands, you have a, um, a person, a, like a wounded person who is standing in front of their causes in front of their past actions, in front of their, their life lessons. They stand in front of those. They defend them. They are not backing down. They're not moving away. They're not hiding. 
they, they are standing and, and moving into this, but they're, they're sometimes defensive. Sometimes they have wounds, right? Sometimes they um, could be a little rough around the edges. And that's the nine of wands. In this energy, I like this energy because this person is taking action. So you can see this person going into action. He has realized that this fence that he has put up that is around his crop is only going to keep out the deer, the livestock, the horses, perhaps, whatever is on the other side of the fence. And he's realized that there's something here that he has forgotten about that he's going to take action. And that is to put a scarecrow up because these birds will land in from the top. So he's taking action to protect whatever is beginning to manifest for him, the crop that is beginning to grow that will be part of his abundance in his future, that will help him take action in the future. So he's taking action now. This person is taking action now to put in some sort of a structure or a system or a process or a protectionary measure to help protect whatever here is being manifested, whatever is being brought in, whatever this is for you. You could be preparing for something, be being, getting prepared for something to happen, right? You're preparing and you're taking action. And yes, this is somebody who looks a little haggard. This is not someone who's dressed in fancy clothes and they don't, they're not all put together here, right? Look at this face, right? This is somebody who has been through struggles. This is somebody who has been through struggles. He's a little windblown, right? He's been through some storms. He's been through some tornadoes and whirlwinds and hurricanes in his life. But he's not running away. He's taking action. And then we have the lover's energy. And it's interesting that this king, this knight of swords, or this king of swords is over top of the lovers just a little bit. So there's some sort of, I feel like, oh, there, there has to be some sort of um, a, an energy coming in that helps bring you balance. There has to be some sort of decision here or something with the lover's energy. Now, I can't really see exactly what it is, but the, the lover's energy is about finding balance, finding balance within yourself so that you can make important decisions about the heart center, about love, about partnership. Now, there could be some sort of a, um, of a partner here, and if there is a partner here that you're working with, this is a partner that is a complementary energy to you, that has a complementary pers personality to yours. It's an energy that's totally different than yours, but it blends with yours. It enhances your energy, and your energy enhances his energy. Feminine or masculine, doesn't matter. We have two people, whatever genders these two people are, doesn't matter. One energy is a more feminine energy, and the other energy is a more masculine Okay, one is a yin, one is a yang. That's how the lover's energy works. And it's passion. It creates um, a spark. It creates passion. It's, it's a very passionate energy. The king of swords is over the top. So this conflict that you've been through and the clarity and the decisions and the discernment and the logic and the common sense that you've learned um, is part of this deeper sense of this situation is has something to do with whatever this lover's energy is. So you really could be just maintaining your balance as you work to manifest this. Or you could have somebody here who is an Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, who could be part of this conflict because he's sitting very much over the top of the five of swords and could be somehow having something to do with this lover's energy. It's, it's just going to be a little bit different for each of us. Let me dig a little bit deeper into this lover's energy just for the heck of it. I, I feel like there's something I haven't uncovered here. Manifesting, manifesting a new love, manifesting a new love partner, manifesting balance within yourself, working to manifest it. Working to bring it in, working to bring balance into your life. Um, most of us that are here understand that when we have internal balance, when we have self-love, when we have that yin and yang within ourselves that are very balanced with each other, that is a perfect kind of manifesting energy. We can begin to manifest that in our external world then. It's 
See, this is a general reading, so... Um, and while this reading could be aimed at single people, it doesn't have to be. There's many, many people um, that are watching these readings that have all different kinds of situations. And this might be as far down as they're going to let me go here. Oh, and as I say that, we have more energy. Five energy, five conflict. Victory over conflict. Look at this. We have two fives. We have the two fighting energies. <laughs> We have the two fighting. We have the two fighting energies, the two struggle energies. Five energies. I just got done doing Aries reading, and they had five energies too. And I, when I, when I um, meditate before I do the readings, I always meditate and I reach out for information for people in, in transformation. That is my, that is my pull. My pull is to help with transformation in people's lives. That's what really lights my fire. So lots of times my readings are about something to do with transformation. And unfortunately, these dang five energies are always here. This is the transformance energy. It's the energy between the ace and the ten. Five. And they're the most complicated, frustrating, difficult energies for me. They're even more frustrating than the, than the tens, to be honest. Maybe the nine of swords is up there too. But these five energies propel us into action. They make life so freaking uncomfortable, so terrible <laughs> that we have to change our ways. <laughs> we have to change. We can't like this. Damn it. I even hate that I have to hold these in my hands. So there has been something that has forced you to see the light. There is something that has forced you to change in some way. It has forced a change in your life. And it probably got really difficult. This is like a tower. This is like a slow, unending tower that maybe never actually became a tower, but it slowly forced you to, to move forward in a different way and begin and see, and there's the King of Swords over the top, right? You had to see the clarity in this and make decisions, right? And here's the Ace of Swords. So you're really working to move out of this conflict here, this conflict and continual struggle and strife and just a certain way of living that brought continual frustration and, and pain and discomfort. You're moving into a much more um, empowered future. You're feeling good about life. You're taking action to protect yourself and to protect here what you have sowed and what your crop that you're, that you're about to really bring into health so that you can harvest it and, and move on in your life. You're finding this balance now. You're trying to manifest a new, a new love, perhaps, or a new balance within yourself, a new radiant kind of energy with the lovers, and you're working to manifest that. Um, we have the Ace of Swords now coming out over the top of the Five of Wands. So there's some sort of new clarity and victory over this conflict. This could be with a person. This could be with a relationship that you're struggling in. This could be with a person. This could be at work. This could be in the community. This could be with your family and at large. But there's victory here. There's some sort of victory. There's some sort of yes. Or there's some sort of clarity that you found that's helping you now manifest in a different way. Magician. All right. So that's where we are um, with. That's where we are with wh what you're doing now. Okay, so I'm going to bring these cards over and out and look at where you're moving into in the future. All right, so we have the Knight of Wands. Wow. We have the Seven of Pentacles. We have the Queen of Cups. And we have the Knight of Cups. And we have the Six of Pentacles. We have the Nine of Cups. And this is the hidden energy, the Queen of Swords. Uh. Okay, so we have the Knight of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups, the Knight of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Swords. Well... I think there's a situation that you're stepping into. I think you could be, um, you're moving forward with something and whatever you're moving forward with brings a lot of passion into your life. 
This could be a person. This could be an opportunity. This could be a new child. This could be a life path or some new hobby that you have or a vacation that you're planning, right? Because these are short, these for some of you are short-term readings. For others of you, these could be life, like a year and annual reading. Um, I saw a comment from somebody, this is a six month reading. Yes, for you're gonna all see different time frames in this. This is why when people really demand that we put a time frame on readings, it is it is impossible. And I really feel a lot of resistance to doing that. Because that, when people ask me for time frames and are very, very adamant about getting a time frame, it tells me that that person lacks the intuition to really connect in with themselves. It, it, and, and so here's that Queen of Swords. Gemini, you know this Queen of Swords, and I'm an, I am an Aqua. We can do the Queen of Swords. I'll step out of her energy. I was in her energy. Sorry, didn't mean to lecture. <sighs> Okay, so let's get back to the night of this Queen of Swords is pulling me in. I'm gonna turn her over for right now. She's at the end here, so I'm gonna pull her over. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull her over. I'm gonna turn her over. You go take a break, Queen of Swords. You take a break now. All right, Knight of Wands. You're moving from the Six of Pentacles to the Seven of Pentacles here. So something is moving forward. And you have a lot of passion and fire for whatever this is. It's gonna scare you a little bit too. Remember, um, the wand's energy is passion, it's chemistry, it's, it's something that puts you into motion. Sometimes I feel like the Knight of Wands energy could even be a little bit of fear energy in there, right? What can get you to take action like nothing else, right? A surprise? Let's say, let's just take a, a real situation that I'm sure each and every one of us have, have done. Let's say you've had a busy week and you haven't really done the dishes. Maybe the dishes haven't been done. Maybe the maybe the the front part of the house is a little bit messy, like mine is right now. And I know that I need to clean. I know I'll feel better if I go and fold up the blankets. And I think there's some socks in my living room I need to pick up off the floor and um, water my plants and take care of things in my living room. I'll feel better after I'm done with these readings. I go out there and I'll do that tonight because I'll know that when I sit down and relax and rest, I'll feel good with it clean. Right, but I've gone now three or four nights with it being messy. But you know what will get me to clean really fast? Fear. If somebody texts me or calls me and says, hey, can I stop by? What will happen to my body? That adrenaline will light. I'll be like, oh yeah, sure, yeah, stop by. When will you be here? Oh, maybe 20 minutes. Okay, off I go. I can clean that living room and nothing flat. All right, this is a Nine of Wands energy. Right? It's not always chemistry and sexual energy. It's, it's that flash that builds that fire in you that puts you into motion. Okay. You know, just to be honest, right? We have to be real about these energies. So there's something here that has put you into motion. It could be love because we have the Knight of Cups energy here. It could be. Doesn't have to be. It can be anything. It could be learning that somebody's coming, coming to visit. Right? It could be, um, getting excited about a vacation and knowing that you have to save up a certain amount of money so that you can go and you can enjoy it, right? Whatever this is, it's something here that you're working towards that is coming into fruition for yourself. There is a wish coming true and there's a little bit of work to do before. There's a little bit of time yet before it comes true, but there's a wish coming true. There's something building. When you go from the Six of Pentacles to the Seven of Pentacles, it tells me that whatever you're working on is beginning to come into fruition. Time is moving forward. The days are moving forward. And the deadline is drawing near. And I feel like it's a beautiful deadline. I feel like whatever you're working towards, um, yes, the Seven of Pentacles, if we look at the Seven of Pentacles, and I described this in the Aries reading too, the same energy came out in the Aries reading as well. The Seven of Pentacles, and probably in other readings, the Seven of Pentacles is showing up for me this week. It's an energy of seeing the fruit on the tree. Seeing something come into, into reality, but it not being quite ready to pick yet. And just think of this apple and this farmer, right? She is, looks like she's pregnant, by the way. And look, she has her hand over her stomach. That tells me that she has other things going on in her life as well, right? She has other things. She's hatching something else. So she could be multitasking. You could be multitasking here. 
But we have a seven of pentacles. This farmer is growing a crop and the crop is ripening. It's the apples are still green. And I, I always say that they're going to be red. We know that some apples are green when they're, when they're ripe, but in my story, they're red. And so we know that the apple still has to get red. And so she knows that she needs to watch the weather, that weather can come in and hurt a crop, that pests can come in and hurt a crop, that the birds can come in and hurt the crop. There's all kinds of things that she needs to protect uh, about this crop, but she also has to plan for how is she going to pick these apples? Are people going to come in and help her pick the apples? Probably because she's pregnant. Maybe she's going to do it herself, but probably not. Look at her. She's planning. She's thinking about the future. So she's planning on how she's going to harvest the apples. She's planning on how she's going to transport them. What market is she going to take them to? Is she going to sell them wholesale? And who is she going to sell them wholesale to? Is she going to sell them fresh picked apples in the local market? Maybe. How is she going to get them to the market? And what is the price she's going to ask for them? And what will her income be? What will her gross income be? And what will her, what will her net revenue be? Right. And what kind of debt does she have that she needs to pay off from the, from growing these apples? And how much will the labor cost? Right. All this is going through her mind. She's very smart. So there's some work still to be done, but look, the six of pentacles is here. So she has balance and stability in her life. She's able then because of this balance and the stability and this equality that she feels, she's able to be very passionate and she's able to think very abundantly about the future. When we live in instability and fear, it is very hard to think in an abundant way, right? Not only does she have to worry about the pests and the weather and the kind of harm that could come to her crop, but she has to be very um, um, the offensive, offensive about thinking about how to sell these, this fruit, how to make money from the fruit. Right. So you can't always be in the offense. You have to think about how to make money, how to gen generate revenue, how to build abundance. And she is definitely doing that because that face is very balanced to me. It's a very balanced kind of face. Right. She's open armed. She's she's it's a, she has a good energy. And it's because of this balance that she has in her life that is allowing her to move forward in this passionate, optimistic kind of abundant way. We have this nine of cups here. This is a wish coming true. This is a wish coming true because we have time now spent by this Gemini energy and understanding how to bring in wellness and health into one's internal life. This is learning how to fill one's own cup. And then when one's own cup is full, what flows over the top is extended to others. Because when our cup is empty, there is certainly none that will flow over the top. So when our cup is empty, we don't really have all that much love that we can offer anyone because we will soon grow tired and depleted. So there is health and wellness now, I feel. And this health and wellness and this new stability and optimistic way of thinking is bringing in a wish that's coming true with the Nine of Cups. Now, here's the thing. We have the Queen of Swords. So we have this energy of love. And then we have the Queen of Swords over the top. And here she's saying hello. This is you, Gemini. This is you. So there's something here that you are, that has you on edge. There's love here. There could be a, somebody coming in with an offer of love. There could be a new child, a new project. Whatever this energy of love is, it inspires you. It, it brings love into your life. It brings inspiration, warm-heartedness, wellness of the internal self and love can be romantic doesn't have to be but for some of you it is you know when you're listening to this reading and if you're captivated with this story you know how it's resonating with you because you have the seven of cups here i mean the seven of pentacles here so there's something here. This could be even two different things. You could be working and bringing balance and abundance in your life. You could be seeing wishes coming true here. And off the side, you could have love coming in. Very well could be because these energies seem to be, for some of you, a different kind of energy here. But here you are, the Queen of Cups, moving forward in an energy of love and well-being, health and happiness. All right. But we could have, for some of you, a love situation coming in. The energies that I see here are Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, um, 
Pisces energy, could be also a Cancer Scorpio, and then Queen of Swords, which is definitely you. That's your energy. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. So I'm going to go deeper into the Queen of Swords and see what I can get. Queen of Swords energy, please. Queen of Swords energy. Eight of Wands in the reverse. Let's see, I have all my cards in the upright. Eight of Wands in the reverse. Queen of Swords. Nine of Swords. This is a Pentacles. Emperor. Okay, my first instinct is this. Well, I have two stories coming out, so I'm going to tell you both, and then you can see which one you feel resonates more with your situation. Um, we have this conflict, this these five energies that you're dealing with now, and these five energies are really difficult. These five energies have forced you to really branch out and to overcome some sort of... These five energies help us see our weaknesses. They help see our cracks in our own personal foundations and they force us to work to fix those. All right. So you've had some cracking in your foundation and it's caused you some pain and you've had to learn how to be, how to live in a very, how to bring selfishness into your life in a very healthy and required way. Cause we have to learn how to make decisions for ourselves and to protect ourselves. And for some of you here, this Queen of Swords is here because you're still a little bit in that five energy. There's still something that you're protecting. And remember, we had the Nine of Wands energy as well. So there's a situation here that it's almost like you're you're hesitating. You're wanting to put the brakes on. Um, you could be dealing with um, the fear. You could be dealing with fear and resistance. This could be the energy of resistance with the Queen of Swords. So there could be some resistance here that you're working through. What is resistance? What time is it? 32. I just don't want to go too long. Look, you know what? I'm dealing with in my, you know, for I grew up in a very strict community, very fundamentally religious community. And it's a beautiful community of people. I love my people. Um, but they are, so they are like, um, like Amish people. So they're very religious people. And when I was a child, I was taught to be silent and I'm a woman. So I was taught to be silent and serve. So when I'm speaking in front of all of you using a camera, which we didn't, we weren't allowed to have recording my voice, which we weren't allowed to do. I am going to the core of what I was taught as a child to the very core and I'm working to flip that energy and I'm doing okay, aren't I? Because I'm continuing on. I'm doing okay. I'm talking about the energy of resistance. Okay, what, whoever taught you, the beautiful people in your life, the people that loved you, the people that cared for you when you were little, what were their beliefs? What was their own resistance when you were a baby, when you were a child? What were their beliefs at that age that they were? Maybe they were 24 years old or 19 years old or 30 years old. What did they believe at that time when they were teaching you? Did they have abundance in their lives? Did they have empowerment in their lives? Because I know when I was, when I'm age 20, when I was age 24, I believed things in my life that hold no value for me today. And I know my son, he's grown up now. But I know he's going to have to overcome some of those things that I taught him when I was young. And there's no, there's nothing to get down. I, I'm not getting down on myself about that because that is part of the human, that is part of the human life. That is part of humanity. That is part of how the circle of life is. But, but this is, I think this for many of you, this is about resistance, understanding what blocks our way to success. Is it fear of success? Is it that we, when we were tiny, before we, get, before we can really remember, we don't remember everything. 
right? We can only sort of remember when we go into the subconscious, when we go into the, unconscious, the subconscious mind. But we're we taught to be in a certain way. Like me, was I taught to be silent and serve? Well, I'm serving, and that what it's what lights my life. But I certainly can't be silent, can I? Because my my this is what I do. It doesn't work. So is there something in the core of who you are that is part of your base learning that you're fighting against now with this, with this situation? And it's nothing to degrade anyone. It is nothing. It is not talking about anything that's degrading or diminishing of anyone. It's just being factual and clear about possibly working through some sort of resistance that we have inside ourselves that are, that's very hard to put our finger on. To, to figure out. I am creating another channel and on that channel, I'll be digging into resistance and how to overcome resistance, how to even realize what resistance is and how do we move forward into our hopes and dreams when we are trying to understand what kinds of resistance we work through. Because we have the eight of wands in reverse and we have the nine of swords. So it's almost like there's action moving, like there is something happening and there's a need to take action, but it's almost like you have this, it, I would say it to my friends, like I keep putting my own brakes on. Like why, there's an open road. Why do I always put my brakes on? I'm putting my brakes on. For what reason? It's an open road. This to me feels like an open road. And here we have this Queen of Swords, very feisty, very defensive, very expression, full of expression and clear thinking and expression and de defiance and all of that, the beautiful energy of the Queen of Swords. I'm a Queen of Swords too. <laughs> I, I, I can do this energy. You can do this energy. We can express ourselves. We can cut people off. We can say things. We can be very clear. We can be very direct. Um, but this is beho what's behind this is this anxiety, right? Behind it is this anxiety. And this anxiety could be affecting the movement forward. It could be, there could be some kind of resistance. Like did, when you were young, were you taught by people? Did you feel like the people that taught you, the people that influenced your life, did they believe that they could live abundant lives? Do they believe that? Did they believe that they could live in wealth? Right? Because it could, because we have the six and seven of pentacles here. Did the people who taught you and who held you in their arms, did they feel like they could, did they understand how to really truly love and care for themselves? Something here is, is putting the brakes on this energy of love. But what's beautiful about this is there's evidence of improvement. And for me in my life, in my own transformations, and I have transformed my life because I spent years and years in poverty and oppression in my life, just like so many of you. There's evidence. There's something coming in here that's fueling this Knight of Wands. There's something here that's happening that you can no longer deny. It might not be the Ace of Pentacles, the brand new reality that you can say it's here, glory be, right? But it's something here that you can no longer deny that's an inclination or some kind of message or some kind of evidence that's coming in that's helping to fuel this passion, this action forward. And this helping this Queen of Swords find the discipline and the strength to move forward. See, the Emperor moves in the Knight of Wands. It's an Emperor that drives forward in the Knight of Wands. So it's discipline over the ego. It's discipline over fear. It's looking straight ahead and knowing that your dreams are over the top. Over the top of the hill are your dreams. And it's necessary now to keep the foot on the gas, to keep the car gassed up, to eat good food so that you can pedal the bicycle over the top of the hill and get to the other side. Because there's beautiful, something beautiful waiting on the other side. There's a dream, a wish that's coming true. And I just got emotional just then. So for some of you, this is something that you have been working on for a very long time. It's something for some of you that you never thought you could attain. 
Don't put the brakes on. Be very careful if you're putting the brakes on. If you're feeling yourself putting the brakes on in your own automobile as you're going up over the hill, look around. Look around and ask yourself, why am I putting the brakes on right now? Is there anything that I see that's causing me to put the brakes on? Or is it an emotion? Is it intuition or is it fear? Because we have this eight of eight of this nine of swords anxiety over the top of the eight of wands, which is fast, optimistic, exciting movement forward. Are you not talking to someone? Are you refusing to move ahead? Are you slower than you should be? This is about learning how to overcome the anxiety, bring in some routines for yourself, some discipline here, routines, processes, ways of thinking, and look at the tangible evidence of whatever this is, because this tells me the page of Pentacles tells me that there's some sort of evidence here for you. If that's a little focus, look at this. There's evidence here of some kind. Maybe it's not money, but it's something here. Find the evidence, find the victories. Okay. Let's look at guidance. Okay, and there is an extended reading that I'll be doing. I forgot. That's what I forgot to talk about. I, I keep forgetting to talk about that I'm there. I do extended readings. These are comprehensive readings, but I also do an extended reading where I dig deeper into these energies and, and try to get more information out for you. And I keep forgetting to talk about it in the beginning. Because, and I think that maybe some of you don't even know. That's how silly I am sometimes. Here is the Knight of Pentacles energy. Two of Wands. Seven of Cups. There is slow, stable progress being made. The Knight of Pentacles, whether this is a person, a situation, whatever this is, it's long-term, stable progress. It's personally my favorite night. This night will bring in change. The Knight of Wands energy will push you into change, but it's not a long-lasting energy. It's an energy that we take advantage of. The Knight of Wands energy we take advantage of it is passion. It's something that, just like when somebody texts you and says, hey, can I come see you in 15 minutes? And all of a sudden, you go from being, oh, I should really clean my house, I should really do the dishes, to being like, oh my God, I have to clean my house, I have to clean my And all of a sudden, you're in action. That's Knight of Wands. Oh, sorry, I even moved my tripod. That's Knight of Wands energy. Knight of Swords energy is quick, blunt communication that brings a tr truth forward. We need that too. But this energy is the Knight of Pentacles. This energy is energy of stable, significant progress that will change your life, that will change your stability, that will change your wealth and how you feel about your kingdom, whatever that is for you. Two of Wands is a decision. How will you do this? How will you take action moving forward? You already have the clarity. I feel like you have the clarity because you have the energies that came out so easily out of the deck. So there's clarity here, and the King of Swords is sitting here looking at me. So there's clarity here. Here you are. Here you are, Gemini. This is your sign, too. This is you and your masculine energy in positive, masculine, powerful air energy. Seeing the clarity, putting all the puzzles, putting the, all the pieces of the puzzle together so you can see the big picture, and making very logical, fair, discerning decisions about your future. The King of Swords doesn't always talk, but he is fair and he is very strong. He's very logical. Okay, so there's a need here to be very logical about what's going on because the emotions are running very strong right now within you. The emotions are strong. So there's a, there's a need here to be very logical about the way you're going to carry this forward. Two of Wands is, a, is an action choice. It's a, it's a, it's taking action and it's something that will create a difference in your future. It's, it's an action that you take. It's how you do it. It's your game plan. What will your game plan be? And I'll go deeper into this reading in the extended. Whew. So all these energies came out in the upright and I flipped them over with my arm. So let's see what's here. Ten of swords. So there's something coming to an end. Remember you have the nine of swords that's creating anxiety. There's something that's coming to an end here. High priestess. 
internal knowledge, enlightenment, wisdom. Again, not a whole lot of talking going on. This might be something that you're going through internally and temperance and having patience and compassion and understanding that this could take some time. You know, you're moving from the Ten of Swords. See, these energies are very cold and, and hard here. And see how the energies are beginning to brighten? They're beginning to change. You can still see the coldness of the mountain range, but um, you have these new fresh energies coming in. You have kind of a fairy energy. So what's getting you there to this energy is this internal knowledge, this divine connection you have with the heavens, with wisdom, with your own enlightenment, with, with understanding that the future will bring actions and lives and experiences that you not yet know, but you have the internal knowledge and the wisdom to take action and to make the best decisions for yourself. This is internal knowing. This is connecting in with your internal wisdom, the, the core of who you are, and really coming to terms with who you are, knowing who you are. So this is something that happens to us internally. Trust and faith, connection to the divine internally. So this is being, when you do this, you're able to really structure how you feel internally. Um, for example, the high priestess is somebody who, when things happen to her, she has this calmness about her. She has a calmness. She can calm herself. She has learned to depend on her higher power, the higher power that she connects in with and her own wisdom within her. So that when something is happening to her, she doesn't go around the community and talk to people. Well, she can if she wants, but she knows what to share and what she doesn't and knows what not to share. So she doesn't go around saying, hey, this happened to me. It's so exciting. But what do you think I should do? And who then does a high priestess talk to? Someone who doesn't understand her story, really. Who can understand my story? Who can understand your story? Not very many people, because only we have lived it. We're the only ones who've lived our story. Others have watched us, but they, have they seen us at night when we cry as we're kneeling before our beds? Have they seen us in moments of true pain? Do they know what's in our hearts really? So when we ask others for advice, we have to be careful and realize who we're asking. Who are we asking for advice and what is the agenda and what is the current enlightenment of that person? And how do they feel about us? Because their advice is going to come from that filter, not from our filter, right? So the high priestess understands that. She understands the most honest and accurate guidance comes from the heavens. It comes from what she believes in, whatever belief system that is. We have different belief systems all around the world, and each and every one is beautiful. So this is somebody that reaches into that higher energy, receives guidance, understands that she is a spiritual team, understands that she is a spiritual being, and she understands her strength. It's this energy that's helping to bring in these new colors, this new life. And it's this energy that will help her create a game plan as she moves into the future. We have the seven of cups here. Okay. This is an energy of emotions running high, knowing that there are changes and options and beautiful things to come, but really being kind of tentative as you put your feet out to take steps, right? Seven of cups. Tower. What was this energy? I'm curious. Four of Wands. There's a new, something new coming in here. Some new kind of shelter or structure or foundation or contract. It's a big change here. Is it not? Could be surprising too. Death transformation. This is the new life coming in. So you've gone through some things here, Gemini. You've gone through some things. Ten of Wands, it's the end, you had the Ten of Swords earlier. So you're at, you've come to the end of some kind of a cycle and now you have a chance to create something new for yourself here. Just as I'm saying that, the Fool comes in. <sighs> managing something new, stepping into something new and managing all of the energy around that, keeping the balance. 
keeping the clarity, continuing to have clarity, continuing to make careful decisions, but allowing that passion, that light within you to, to be a true, stable, and strong flame that will help you take action into the future. Having the ability to look at the big picture of your wealth, your portfolio, and how your actions are going to bring um, stability and abundance and increased revenue for you in the future. And then having that love for yourself so that you continue to focus on yourself, to check in with yourself, to see how you're feeling emotionally, to make sure that you're caring for yourself enough, you're giving yourself enough time to rest, you're giving yourself quiet time to to revive yourself, you're understanding when you're feeling fulfilled and you're understanding when you're feeling diminished, you're beginning to really constantly, continually, consistently care and maintain your your inner internal wellness. And this seven of cups energy, this ability to overcome and to move forward into something new, this balance is going to help you start some new kind of journey. So the emotions run very strong when we're heading into a new, um, and, and just as I say that, like, my, did you hear my voice waver? Like, as we're heading into a new situation here, we have to understand the value of these major changes in our lives, the value of these lessons and learn to accept them and learn from them because there's a beautiful new journey coming in here for you. Okay, let me look at what energies I'm going to look deeper in in the the, um, extended reading. Well, this lover's energy, I'm going to look at this lover's energy. Okay, so we have lover's energy here. I'm going to look at the Knight of Cups energy. The Nine of Cups energy. And the Knight of Wands energy. I'm going to look at the the Fool energy and the Two of Wands. So I'll dig into this Two of Wands. So those are the energies I'm going to look into. There's a lot of energies here. Um, I probably won't look at anything else beyond these energies. Sometimes I look at other things too, but this is a lot. I just feel like there's a lot here. Um, So I'll dig deeper into these energies and see what I can get out of them. All right. So thank you, um, Gemini. This has been a really fun reading. Um, I'm excited to see the progress that you made, and I'm excited to see you at some sort of a beautiful new beginning. And um, I wish you all the very best. Thank you all very much.